got onto Air Force One and Mrs. Kennedy sat near the casket in the rear compartment, we thought we were going to take off right away for Washington. Well, we found out that the vice president had been conferring with people in Washington, and the decision had been made that he needed to be sworn in while we were still on the ground there in Dallas. For an hour, Air Force One remains at Love Field, waiting for a judge who can swear in the new president. While Kennedy's widow keeps watch over his coffin. I went in to see Mrs. Kennedy. Oh, it was a very, very hard thing to do. She said, oh, what if I had not been there? I am so glad I was there. 26 people cram into the room to witness the oath. Johnson was already in the room. It was only about a 10 by 10 room, a very small compartment. And he turned to uh, his secretary and he said, would you ask Mrs. Kennedy if she would like to stand with us? We were just stunned to see her. She didn't say anything, she just stood there. I saw the blood that had hit her skirt. The stockings were the things that struck me most. The stockings were, the blood had congealed. And her right glove, that immaculate woman, it was caked with blood, her husband's blood. She said, I want them to see what they have done to Jack. The staff who had made the long march with John F. Kennedy to Camelot, and now he was gone. And there's the mascara streaking down their cheeks as they're crying. And you could hear the sobbing, men and women. And Johnson went over to Mrs. Kennedy. He took her by both hands, and he told the judge to proceed. They find President Kennedy's prayer book on the plane for the swearing in, and a dictaphone records the ceremony. I do solemnly swear that I will faithfully execute the office of president of the United States. The office of president of the United States. Everybody was aware. It was very historic. It was very emotional. As soon as the swearing-in ceremony took place, the pilot got the aircraft moving, and we took off for Andrews Air Force Base near Washington. 2.47 PM. Already the news of Kennedy's assassination is going out around the world. In London, Parliament has adjourned. Processions of mourners are winding through Berlin. Funeral music is playing on Radio Moscow. I call that the end of the age of innocence, and that's pretty much exactly what it is. 